Hello. Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Shedheads podcast. It's the hardest <laughs> podcast to listen to. The Dark Souls of podcasts, if you will. <laughs> it probably sounded and like I said the Shedheads the podcast. The Shedheads. <laughs> Uh, I like that better. Actually, Can we re- retitle. Yeah, I you know that's that's a lot better. Let's just censor um the the last two like letters of shed. Welcome to the Shitheads podcast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> ah, uh, that that's good stuff. That's good stuff, oh, man. So, guys, you know you know what it means with the Dark Souls of podcast. That if you can listen to it, that makes you the better gamer. You know, just like finishing Dark Souls. It's just that's how it is. So it's- that means if you subscribe and listen, it makes you a genius statistically are we rebranding our slogan i don't know yeah that's just a bunch of selling points you know don't at me so we are on some limited ass time today as you can see by the video length it's gonna be a short boy today yeah it's that's okay we've been having some short boys and uh i guess it's okay you know you know well unless something happens next week it probably won't need to be short it sounds like we'll need some time to talk next week um, no, 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 no. The, the next no, 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 not week. next week. Yeah, the one ne- after. Yeah. Oh, by the way, do you know what we're doing next week? No, I don't. What are we doing? It's up to oh, you. Okay. Do you? <laughs> okay. I, I well, have hopefully no you'll idea. know by the end of the podcast. Oh, son of a! You make me announce it. That's right. Yeah, you yeah. Can't just you, come out with the videos. How dare you? You got to announce it. Uh, okay. Um, let's get into our first topic then. Let's just jump into the shit. We got we got no time to waste because we're talking about music. Doing two albumies. Um, yeah. I don't know why I said it like that. We got um, the Decemberists, the Crane Wife. Decemberists. 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 That, that's coming second. Um, um, yes. And first, what we're getting to now, I guess, is The Trick of the Tale by Genesis. Genocide, yes. Let's no. do it. No, that is, not, that is not an okay word. Okay. That's it. The whole, the whole channel is getting deleted now. So, Trick of the Tale. Yes your recommendation to me what do you want yeah to- i mean well you said uh you said you needed like more than three listens for this one i actually gave it five yeah that's a big boy five, five listens yeah I th- when how was that like the first time this has happened i think even like with the in the court you only gave it three uh no i gave that five. Oh, you did too okay well because that was when we were calling that a jumbo wreck because you want me oh, to... Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. I gave you an instruction to do that. Yeah. But I, I guess I remember you still said you needed more listens. Mm-hmm. I'm um, doing some hard boys, I guess. I don't mean to. No, it's just kind of the nature of this and of progressive kind of rock, I guess. Is is that what this... Yeah, this, it's, it's progressive rock. That's what this album is. Um what do you want to lead with about it? I guess it's... Is it maybe their first album with Phil Collins? No. Oh, well, I don't know, actually. I, I'm not 100% on that. Um, oh, wait, this was, no. no. this was this was way later. Um, I th- This was when um Peter Gabriel had left the band, I think. Yeah. I and was, that's why this, I think this album was a bit controversial at the time. I know? meant, like, with, with Phil Collins as the singer. But uh, then I remembered uh, this isn't the album that came right after... The last one you had me listen to by them. Um, no. I can remember no. the name of the one you didn't wreck me, but not... Okay, it was uh, I gave you, Selling um, England by the Pound. Yeah, I gave you uh, Selling England. And I can remember the name of Lamb Lies Down Broadway, but you didn't recommend me that one. No. And that would, honestly, <laughs> that, that, that might be a lot for you. <laughs> if this needed five listens, mm-hmm. you probably need like double. Like You need like a good couple months with it, probably. Yeah, I guess so. Well, maybe. Let's. I'm trying trying to strengthen those ears a bit. Something can. Sometimes it can take a lot. Well, well, it's a double album, you know. Imagine like if this was like, imagine if this album was three times the length. <laughs> right. Well, like with songs too. I mean, so it's not three. It's not a three hour album, guys. But like, there's a lot of songs and there's a lot of shit. It's pretty dense. So what do you want to say about this one? Because um, I think we've heard it like as much as each other now. <laughs> I think I've heard it more than you still. Okay. I've had a lot of time with this album. Yeah, you told me you heard it five or six times, so I knew we were get, getting up there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. that's enough. I mean, I, I feel like I should have uh, listened to it again before talking about it, but it's fine. Mm-hmm. I, can, I can remember it. Um, I don't know. There's not a whole lot to lead with other than, like, I guess, what did you think? What did, I don't know any uh, 
You know, give give me any clues of what you think about it, how you took it in. Um, well, I guess let's talk about the album art first. What's the album? <laughs> uh, it's yellow. Uh, there's these dudes on there. That is correct. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Any, I don't know anything like why. I don't. Yeah, I, I didn't try to examine this one. The only album art of theirs I've seen so far that made any sense is Selling England. <laughs> the uh, dude on the bench all curled up and, you know, this other shit. Land Lies Down don't make any fucking sense to me. A uh, trick of the tail. This it, one, I guess it's it, it kind of looks like... It looks like he's out of Narnia or the devil <laughs> on the far right there. I think the... Um, I, I mean, I've seen the... Uh, this done a few times like uh in their, in their live records i think yeah but with the people like walking and stuff it's like their aesthetic but yeah right okay cool so you don't know anything about it either it's just like huh weird it's a nice shade of yellow i mean both of the albums we're covering here mm -hmm. are about the same in terms of like the cover just yeah beige yellow with uh with people in the front yeah i guess mine's a little more minimal minimalistic um this usually only has two this one has like it's like five yeah six 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 yeah. things um so yeah that, that mean therefore <laughs> genesis is a more complex elf <laughs> this one's from 1976 um and what do we think of these eight tracks so you is is this your favorite genesis album that you've heard no 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 but i think okay this is an interesting case it's probably like one of my new favorite albums just like period but it's not my new favorite genesis album that makes sense so your favorite genesis it's, album would be even better then. it's still the lamb i think okay but like this is still i don't know like in terms of favorites i think this trumps it a bit oh i in see terms of albums but in terms of i don't know it's like it's one of those i see these three came out in a row it's oh yeah so i guess it's part of their big stuff makes sense makes sense yeah it's kind of like um i guess dark side but the reverse for me you know mm -hmm. where it's like yeah it's probably i think it's gets i guess it's like one of the best albums that's that's ever come out like i can say that but it's not the best pink floyd album mm -hmm. this one's probably like one of my favorite genesis albums but it's not their best <laughs> sure okay i can i can follow that to a degree hopefully all of you can um so what did I think? It was hard for me to to uh kind of note and to it was hard for me to talk about cuz I don't know. I guess you could say um this sound isn't like the most appealing to my ears. So it was taking me a bit to like kind of sink my teeth in and and get some to remember like what was what and what was there what was where it, it does throw a lot at you that's just kind of the nature of the genre that's like it's not it's weird like i, I don't want to like have this um have this narrative that like i got the superior ears or anything but just to me i thought like oh this is like pretty <laughs> no, I, simple i can <laughs> tell I, I can tell you think that but <laughs> no like i don't want to think i mean it's just like yeah <laughs> fuck up <laughs> no i think it it's it's a style thing it's like if you're not immediately into what you're hearing you're gonna have to hear it more i think to like to talk about it like like the classic example with you would be dookie <laughs> like it, it at first sure. it's not a sound that like you're that open to so it took a number of listens before you could really, you know, talk about each song and distinguish them and, uh, and love it for what it is. Um, and for me, I feel like I sort of had that by the end. Um, but what I found is I like this album a lot more when it's doing something more low key or doing something kind of building. Um, and I'm less, lesson to the that kind of 70s rock sound that we hear on a lot of progressive stuff that uh, I know you're into like sort of uh, sort of tubesy I don't think this is all tubesy I don't think it's extremely tubesy but like the uh, 
the eccentricity of it like the the, the okay we can go into the uh the first track with that because i think that's the best example the 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 album itself is like pretty yeah i would agree with that it's pretty in your face with a lot of things like it's very but that's kind of genesis where they're like putting on a show you know mm-hmm. and that's kind of like i, I know their thing so far from what i can tell at least with the lamb i can tell you really like that and uh that's not as much my thing like i like uh i was describing to you i think like last time we talked about music there's something that like appeals to me about something just darker or moodier or blah 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 that that uh kind of if if it's just tinged in a bit of uh kind of s- sorrow or whatever but then that makes it sad and sad music can't be good that's true it makes me sad therefore but i don't like good music so remember, oh that's remember <laughs> remember yeah that's right oh fuck yeah so um so i guess i it, it doesn't necessarily need to be that because obviously you could get down to semantics like um what about instrumental tracks or that's not semantics that's just that's just an actual question <laughs> yeah but like you, you could still i mean what what you said is like a, a you know a mood or like a tone yeah you know that still can be applied to instrumental stuff it's a very it's an emotion type of thing Sure, like, it's not like it's not dark. It's not like you know. Um, I, if you have like, I, I'll just say now, because generally this is like the kind of mood and atmosphere, the stuff you give me, and then the stuff I give you is is like darker or something. Today I didn't give you something darker. No, <laughs> um, no. but like th- sometimes when I'm trying to appeal to you a bit more, I'll give you something that is like more sunny. Like when I give you figure eight. <laughs> or or this one that i gave you today well i think it, it just largely depends on context you know like i like dark shit yeah i know you, know? you do too so the i want is still one of my like you know all-time favorites I'm yeah like, yeah dark as fuck. i think i like appreciate the wall more than i did when i first heard it and i definitely appreciated it more with the movie when we did that um but i guess like just like not really a tip because you can recommend me whatever the fuck you want but if you want my ears to be more attuned to it going forward like if you have any like more dreary shit that you want me to hear go I guess. for those okay so i guess i'll go for tone so, so why i went for this is because with this album as we'll get into is um it's pretty it's pretty frontal with its chorus mm-hmm. um you get a lot more like repeating choruses simple simpler mel- melodies yep a lot more clarity and unity in that shit you were um, telling me that uh last week yeah or two weeks ago um and, and a lot of uh, a lot of this was getting stuck in your head yeah a lot of um pro a lot of prog rock stuff is it's just like well where the fuck's the chorus at <laughs> you right know? um this one it, it's it's kind of like it, it's kind of going you know down the slider a bit in terms of like you know more classic or alternative rock mm-hmm. in at least in that like department it's still pro so progressive mm-hmm. and i guess like i could see why like some some more die hard like prog rock bands would look at this and be like eh really okay i, I get i could see that happening you know if they're like you know they're the real like snooty types yeah i did just talk to a, a fan it's, of it's pretty i don't know i think this one's pretty different compared to compared to selling england and the lamb yeah i was just gonna say when i was in line at amoeba i was talking to like a bit of an older dude and uh just about music and shit and <laughs> and you I was telling him the shit that you've been recommending me on the podcast, nice. like uh, like the Beatles, like Pink Floyd, and like Jimi Hendrix, and all, all this like yeah, obvious all, stuff. All the uh, all the classic boomery type of music, but you know. Yeah, and then, um, and then when I mentioned Genesis, he was like, "Oh, I could never get into them." So maybe you're onto something. <laughs> <laughs> maybe there's a, a certain type of fan that cuts, draws the line at Genesis for some reason. Well, like I mean, at least with this album, like with the Genesis fan, right? You know, it t- it did take me a few listens, like admittedly, to um to fully uh like um get um selling England under my belt. Mm-hmm. Once I did, then it was just like, okay, this is their style, is how you know Phil Collins sings and all that. Yeah. Now here's what I don't remember. Cause like with the with those albums, mm-hmm. it's very like I said, it's very like you know kind of off kilter type type of rhythm sometimes, mm-hmm. and it goes in, 
it, the melody will go in places where you don't expect them to. And this had that a bit. The whole sometimes the whole fucking songs go in directions you don't expect them to. Mm-hmm. This one has that a bit, yeah, but I think less so. It's toned way down. Anyways, let's get to the first track. We <laughs> we already talked fifteen minutes, just kind of generally. Yeah. About it. Well, you're gonna be less disappointed when we talk more generally about this because, like I said, I'm I was having a lot of trouble pinpointing stuff, but. As we get into the first track, like I brought back categories for this just because I wanted to be able to uh, sure be be able to pinpoint as much as I could, um, and I I'll let, I'll let you know right off the bat I only put things in like and meh, so I put yeah that's th- so safe I put this one in, in the opening track in meh Dance on a volcano because meh, I, I figure fuck, you really like this one. <laughs> I, I'm hurt. I, I thought you would like this one. It's likely the most eccentric ADD. Likely the most eccentric and ADD track on here. And uh, th- like, th- I'm <laughs> again, obviously, this is never a comment on the talent it takes to write the stuff, to play the stuff, to jam it, whatever the fuck. Um, it's just how it hits my ears um and there's clearly a lot of talent going on here there's a lot of the drum beats were reminding me of something like king crimson um the drums are pretty insane on here yeah uh, across the whole thing i mean it it lays down a pretty good groove i think you know you got the uh, electric guitar just doing a doing its own riffy thing Mm mm-hmm you know? I finally remember what this one sounds like, so that's good because I kept having trouble just again pinpointing it, and so th- this is one the better guitar- start doing it right. That's the guitar, the, yeah, that's the line that repeats a lot. Doing it right. I don't know the way it says right is very elderly, so right. I thought you would like it. Yeah, I. I, <laughs> you like I, I re- the first time I listened to this, I remembered you said. There's some Elliotisms, and then I was like, "Where were those?" And then I like completely forgot to look for it again. <laughs> it was just right here in the beginning. I don't know. I just okay. thought that I'm like, oh, the way on the way he sings that is like how Elliot does a lot of uh, uh when when you hold one note but it changes well, one word but it changes uh notes. Yeah, yeah. It's just just kind of a I singing you. like technique. I'm for sure at all that. The melisma. Also the um oh finally the candle kicked in. Oh, it smells good in here again. Finally. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, the guitar melody also uh, it, it mirrors the vocal melody in the chorus. Yeah, I guess that's true. I didn't even notice. They're two separate it, it, entities it, to me. It, it's kind of well, it's not exactly the same. It's similar, mm-hmm. but it's very it's very there. You know, when when you listen to uh, just listening to back to back, you got the little bridge that builds up. It starts nice and low. You got the drums just kind of doing um doing some simple. Dun, 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 dun. No, building it. <laughs> is is this the song? No, I don't think it is. I'm not going to sound dumb here. I mean, the song is six minutes. <laughs> the opening track is six minutes. What? I I was going to say like one of these uh goes into a a bit of a crazy thing instrumentally, and I think it's this one about like halfway through. There's like a little interlude, and then the the drums start doing this kind of trippy beat uh in in a different yeah yeah kind of like uh well, there's that there's that uh there's also that um that kind of uh that eight bit synth there that's uh really doubling on the bass there's a lot of sub bass happening in the song too yeah this is the like that i don't thing? think that's here or is, is that the, is that a different one? Oh yeah yeah out yeah. of the night just out on the stars Cool. Um, yeah, if you want to give me any any of your notes on this one, you can go for it. I don't think it was all that crazy of a uh, instrumental though. It's kind of just like a bridge. No, kind of breaks it up. You just get the drums and the uh, and the synth having a groove like back and forth. It's possible I'm thinking of the wrong song too. They, they really um just overall they really like accentuate the off beats. Mm-hmm. Um, to to really like syncopate the rhythm a bit more. Mm-hmm. You know when you listen to the uh, the. Dun, 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 like the uh the the really deep synth is like 
working off of the drums and the bass is working like off of that you know it's like a kind of trifecta thing of rhythm happening Mm -hmm. uh i definitely noticed pretty fucking it's pretty sick groove i think well just in general i noticed some great i would say i like it's hard to single something out say like there's great bass work or there's great drumming on here because they kind of all carry their weight so (laughs) they're all working off of each other like all bouncing Mm that's kind of the it's the Genesis way. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I dig the fuck out of this. I clearly. knew you would. Yeah. Um, I had to be honest with myself. I couldn't just try and please you. No. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I mean, that's fine. That's what, that's what we are here for. We are here to discuss things. Yeah. I know you don't like it when, when your stuff don't hit me, but you know, sometimes. No, I'm just, I mean, I get like disappointed a bit, you know? Yeah. I mean, now it's just like, it's whatever, you know, you like it, you know, I just want to show you it. That's good. Because I'm sharing things that I either think are good Mm -hmm. or that I think you'll like or both. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly it. Um, So track two, Entangled. I think think also, um, just quickly to finish, to close out the first track. Okay. It's a pretty like, it's a pretty wide like kind of scope in terms of, um, in terms of like the pitch and the sound and all that. Mm -hmm. Because he got like the really deep, bass happening like in that groove and then the chorus jumps up much higher and mm-hmm. you have some other type of synth kind of working off of that you mm-hmm. know, the do, 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 do. no that's the guitar I'm, I'm an idiot yeah I think there's some dueling guitars doing that yeah helps paint it and all that it's just it, it's, it's really wide type of sound right and I really like the wide type of sound yeah th- there's something with the production of this like period of 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 uh progressive rock that sounds like i, I want to say like soaked in reverb but not exactly like it i get what you mean it does kind of sound reverby but it's not yeah it's it's not especially because like it gives the feeling i've like heard there stuff is. that is soaked in reverb and this isn't that but like i just it's really space no there's like the right amount of reverb yeah yeah um i think that has to do with like the sounds they use and uh how um i mean there's some like some effects on you know on the voice mm-hmm. to give it a little more uh, there's some reverb on there yeah give a little echo but i think that has to do with like how i was talking about how wide the sound is yeah maybe because i get what you're talking about it's really hard to describe though mm-hmm. i did do a listen with headphones and then most of my listens were in my car um yeah just to let you know that i guess so cool entangled entangled um oh, do you have any favorites on this album by the way yeah this is one of them okay cool i was uh, gonna say this is my favorite i told you i here. love it mostly when it's low-key um this is easily my top favorite actually maybe uh could be tied with something else well so this is either my favorite or my second favorite i put it in here as my second favorite but uh but i i don't know cool so do, uh, do, a word that do, like do, do, do. I think really helped define <coughs> the highest points of the album for me um, is um, it's like an emotion kind of thing that they paint with the piano a lot and the uh, some other instrument that I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> um, with this which, song? I think. Is there a piano in this song? <laughs> I don't even know. I don't. There's. So what I noted was just like the mood. It's like twinkly and wondrous. It it, it is very like laid back, spacey, vibing. You know, mm-hmm. you you have like just electric guitar, just doing uh just doing so, just doing some light notes, up and down chords and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's just it's that riff that I, that I hummed already. Yeah, and no. You got Phil Collins just singing real light and soft, and, they, and then you have. Ugh, you get you get the group vocals coming in like on top of him, and then the chorus hits you, kicks you right in the nuts, kicks me right in the nuts. What I meant with the piano is, uh, I think they use the piano in a couple other tracks to create yeah. to create the same like kind of twinkly mood. I'm talking definitely about. Uh, like in Mad Man Moon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, for sure. I don't. I just like I don't know if piano's in this one. It could be. It could be there to like paint it a little bit. In this, one, I don't. I don't. I think it's the guitars in this one. Um, yeah. Again, I'm struggling to remember like exactly how this one goes. I'm gonna. Okay. You know what? Next. Next Christmas. No, wait. Next Christmas. No, not Christmas. Um. Yeah. When um. 
Your birthday's sooner than that. I'm just gonna get you. I'm gonna get you while I was here, buds. Okay. That way you can just do this and just <laughs> pop one in. <laughs> oh yeah, that, that that would be a little helpful, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that way too, if you go on walks and shit, you can just pop yeah. them in. There you go. They're so super good. Um, Surprised you don't have them yet. Um, but yeah, there's a uh, there's like electric guitar going on. I think also um like a steel string guitar like on top of it because it's got a bit. It's it's very twangy. It's a very twangy type of sound. But that's like, what I'm thinking of. Not yeah. not super harsh. It kind of just um it, it kind of just like ruffles up the the wave pattern a bit of like a of like a guitar tone. It feels like the, yeah. There's it, it keeps it really light. What that does. Yeah, it, there's just some really high kind of other str- string sounding instrument. It doesn't. Uh, yeah, doesn't sound like a guitar to me, but it could be, a, I guess, like with an effect oh. on it. I think um, it is a guitar, yeah. or it, it could be like a guitar-like instrument. Yeah, have, that's yeah. Like I really, I really high don't up. know, but that's like do, 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 do. that's where that like sweet, dreamy kind of wondrous quality yes, comes from. Uh, uh, this is just a very long way of saying it's got that sweet, dreamy type of quality to it. Oh, that chorus. With the group vocals coming. Okay, yeah, yeah. I really do like that. I didn't know if this was this one. <laughs> well, if with we your can consent, help you, yeah. we will. Yeah. With your consent, we can experiment further still. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love the the like low part it goes to right when right when he says experiment. You know. Yeah. It go, it's a chord that you don't expect to go to. That's the other thing I love in music, too. Yeah. When it goes to like a really low chord or like a minor, possibly, mm-hmm. my ears aren't that good. Sadly. They layer those vocals like a cake on uh, this one. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Oh, that's so on hot. On a lot it's of so these, I guess. But, uh, but it's really, it really shines here because um, the instrumental is somewhat minimal comparatively. Um, so, yeah, I like this one. What do we got? And it also works super well with the guitar too. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like this isn't even. Oh yeah, and I this know isn't th- even like super complex. There's no like drums or ha- or like super incredible bass lines happening. I noted the uh, a lot of the painting. It's just a uh, floaty high tremolo, whatever that instrument is. The long <laughs> solo that plays up through the end. <laughs> yeah. Oh god, I love that. I don't, I don't know, know what that is, but I I don't I don't know I don't quite know either honestly. Well, I liked it, <laughs> and I noted it. It, it's it's not a theremin. It's because it's it no. fits too squarely into the notes. I wanted to say it, it reminds me of the theremin or the saw or what, like any other, any other instrument like that. I could. I, oh, I was just gonna say I could end up like getting this sound, but mm-hmm. like now I don't know how the fuck they did it then. <laughs> um, they pro- I think they put. They put something through an oscillator. It might be an analog type of a uh, type of synth. Yeah, it's a bit fluty. It's definitely not a flute, but it's like a flute and a vibraphone had a baby. Yeah, but then you put you, but then you get get like the pitch, um, like how squarely the notes fit into each like kind of pitch, like a piano. Right. There's, there's no like bend. Like you can hear like some bending of the pitch, like when you change notes, like in wind instruments mm-hmm. or theremins and all that shit. Some don't. At least I don't think so. I don't think so either. But it's still very floaty. I, I think it's. I don't know. That's it's a great fucking sound to close out the rest of the uh, the song. Yep. And then you have like the real like subtle choir or possibly strings or some shit. Right. Just built. Just kind of just keeping it there. So good. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. It's just tracks like these. They they bop. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, they don't, it's not a bop, but like, you know what I mean? No, it's a, it's I, I a, get it's you. A hit, you know. Especially since I like a lot of low key stuff. And this is the uh, this is the second track too. Yep. Um. So track three then. Squonk wonk. Um. This one's kind of all you. <laughs> Got the really deep bass happening with this, this super uh, this groovy drum kit. Yeah. This one's way more. Uh, Way more, way more rocky because it's you know a lot stronger. I'm gonna, lot yeah, I, like I said, I'd, like this one, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna kind of hand it over to you. You have, you have no opinion on it, or you just don't remember it. 
that's kind of it. Like I, uh, wow. I wrote forgettable. I don't know. Sorry. What? <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. In he my says note. Scooby Doo in the song. He does. I think so. <laughs> it sounds like it. Yeah. He says Scooby Doo. Uh, this makes me laugh. Scooby Doo. No. Yeah. I. It's. The, I uh, heard. Like I've listened to your album five times, and I even tried to p- do notes so I could talk about it, and like. At the end, all I had to say was, sorry, I don't know what to say about this one. <laughs> you suck. Your notes suck. <laughs> so uh, so it's all you. you even even the duds, I, I can write shit about it on yours. But okay. Um, I mean, the song's... It, it's it's a bit of a meme, I feel like. Is it? Just kind of with, with the uh, vocal melody, at least lyrics. As far it as sounded I tell. like a very standard rock song from what I remember. So, Well, not standard, but uh, yeah, standard I'll, for, I'll say, for Genesis. Almost. Standard Genesis rock song, I guess. I guess so. Um yeah it's it's way more forward in terms of rock you got like just um you got like a moderate drum beat but the the bass really grooves off of it mm-hmm. um and it's really fucking deep too i mean you got like more like, more regular type of genesis melody you know mm-hmm. in the in the verses so i guess that's where i could have uh i don't know that that's not a strong point for me really so i guess that could be why you're like eh, i don't remember it so much like, it, but it, it it jumps way up for the chorus. You know, it gets really groovy with the with the rhythms. Mm-hmm. If anything, this one had like that blendy sound you got listening to Dookie for the first time. <laughs> it doesn't mean that it really is. Uh, there's nothing special about it. It just yeah. is my perception of it at the time. I mean, I think I think you're. I think I can agree with like it's a kind of a standard rock song for Genesis. Mm-hmm. Still a bop though. I mean, I dig it. Yeah, not every song that takes a more like straight rock approach uh, is at the bottom for me. But uh, this one had to be at the bottom because I didn't have anything to really say for okay, it. Okay, you have to love the bridge. Hold on, where's the fucking? Where's the? Where's my thing? There was like one vocal line that came through. Every Doobie now and do. then that uh that I was like, Oh, that's kinda like I like that a bit. Doobie doo. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. That's just the only vocal line that's popped out to me. No, it's something that comes through a few it's, times. You um, have to um, it's you a have melody. To appreciate the bridge. It's a melody though. I was like, Oh, I like that and then I was kinda like, Oh, but like nothing else is grabbing me. You have to appreciate the bridge. I think it's like somewhere around here. I'm playing it for him, guys. Because it takes a tone down. Um is that piano you're talking about yeah that line i like that melody right there i love that melody but that's kind of like uh what stands out about it and uh nothing else did for me and like since i didn't even remember that till you played it i guess that's why i wrote i it was forgettable for me um, i think that's the standout part I guess. Yeah. Like, sure. That's, um, no, I agree with I really that. like how it breaks it up, but then it goes from there, and then it, it goes back to the drum beat. I'm not huge on the transition back, because mm-hmm. it's just kind of... Uh, do, do, it's just one like one bam, hit. I'm like, I'm like, Genesis, you could you can nail the transition much better than that. Right. <laughs> like, that. that's kind of a... I don't know. It's, it's fine. It's just like, they, they do so much more. It's okay. I'll stop being on that, but yeah, um, and I guess the back back from that, I'm not like it's not a uh, so much strong for me either. Mm-hmm. So much appreciate the back that. half. You say the backpipe? No, I said the back half of um, the song. Is that what you're saying? No, like when it comes back to the uh, oh, okay. to, to the um, yeah to the regular um, uh, rock groove. Mm-hmm. Okay. Bah, what is fourth? Bad man moon. Okay, so I have this down as my favorite, um, but I like started writing it there um, about halfway through because I was like, oh yeah, it's this one. And then this song goes through a big uh, facelift halfway through. It yeah. does. So It is seven and a half minutes though. So far all these songs are, have been at least six minutes. Yeah, so I was... <laughs> I want Entangled to be longer though, god damn it. <laughs> Honestly, the ones that landed towards the top for me are the ones that like were memorable for me i guess uh so this one had that uh 
this well, one I mean, and Entangled had the Entangled has the very memorable kind of chorus to it and the group vocal part that you're yeah, talking I can, about. Yeah, I can say so far, yes, yeah, Wonk is the least memorable. So uh-huh. I, I, I can agree there. Um, This one, uh, what did I write? I wrote uh, soft, sweet, low-key build to a powerful chorus, um, which is what I liked about it a lot. And then it switches, or yeah, it kind of changes gears into something way more upbeat. You get the flute, you get the crazy solo in the beginning. Yeah, yeah the crazy twinkly piano. Um, so, piano solo that I think we're talking about the, the same one. It, the, to- the song takes its time to build. It was like, I was like, Jesus. <laughs> um, and then it returns to form for the ending passage, which uh, I like that. So it's, it's a uh, unique kind of structure. They don't they don't keep to uh, structures too often. They kind of say we're gonna do it our way. The bass really. Um really beast up the piano in the in the opening part i'm gonna have to play it for um, a second here i can't I his headphones i'm gonna get you them or just get them yourself um yeah because um because because that's what the whole tone of what's happening you know it's like all it's light laid back yeah um it's very ballady the uh, way uh phil Collins is singing yeah. it uh-huh. um one thing that is that I love to hear in that kind of thing is like a bit of an extra kind of uh, twist on some bass. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe like add the fifth or something like in in that power chord, like in the bottom half. Or um, mm-hmm. oh God, yeah, I hear it on your end, and it just went right into the uh, I, I like that. that main verse, I guess. And it's just a slide down. And that's just the groove, and then the group vocals come back. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the drums kick in, too. Yeah. Yeah. I so think... Uh, yeah. I think this one... Um, yeah, and then it's got something for the uh, for the ballad type of listener like me, I guess, and then for the crazy progressive enjoyer. <laughs> When it gets into that middle section, I mean, it just it 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 just keeps building, and you got um mm-hmm. you got choruses happening too. Mm-hmm. Just fucking listen to the song at this point. Yeah, I appreciate this one. <laughs> I'm an appreciator of it, and it really builds like all the way up until he says something about the Madman Moon. The Madman Moon. I want to hear the piano thing you were talking about. Yeah, do you, you know what I'm talking do, about, do, right? Do, 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 do. You get a little did bit you, of a break. Did you forget about it? Or you just want to hear it? Okay, it's that. Yeah. That's not crazy. It's just fast. Yeah, it's crazy. It's just playing the same notes. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> uh, I, I like how you think that's crazy. That's some crazy it, shit. It's, it's easier than it sounds, trust me. It's easier for you than it sounds. No, it's easier than it's. Trust me. Um, it sounds pretty good. It's just he's rolling up and down with the notes. Mm -hmm. It's it's a chord arpeggio. When he changes very quickly, that's impressive. You know. mm -hmm. Um, okay. I there. Depending on the chord, it can be very challenging for like, you know, the fingering, I guess. Mm -hmm. But it's not like super like like an intensive solo or anything. Yeah, I do love it when they do this shit though. Again, it's it's actually not my favorite part of the song, but it's like something that you need to point out. It's a cool like oh yeah, for sure. It's a cool subdivision of the like of the chords. Yeah. Obviously happening. I like it best when it's kind of this dramatic ballad. <laughs> um and I like the build that they go for. I think it pans out pretty well. So what what what's that? There's another that? instrument, um, that's kind of paired with it. There's a lot of shit on here that I don't know what, that, what the sounds are. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there you go. Okay. So, Robbery, Assault, and Battery. Yeah. I figure you like this one a lot. I don't know. I was still stuck on Mad Mad Moon. That's a, that's a big boy song. That could have that, that could have definitely used uh, me writing about it, and that could have been a long boy. Would do, yeah, because it does. Because I just know, I just remember that it goes into like kind of double time, uh, drum groove. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, uh, it, that's not as strong for me either as the first half. You know, with the piano. Mm-hmm. 
I feel like just that that first half was much more fleshed out. The uh, I do like what's happening with instrumentally. <laughs> the viewers can see where or anyone who's listening can see we're only halfway through the album and halfway through the podcast. And we still have another album, so that's why I'm being the other a album little like, should be yes. quicker though, at least. It there's, should. there's less to get through, I think. Um, in terms of discussing like what's happening in the songs. Mm-hmm. Um, well, like this, this, this last track, it's a whole fucking tone shift almost. This one? Uh, no, Mad Mad Moon. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so yeah, Robbery, Assault, and Battery. Yeah. I figured you'd like this one a lot. I think this one's on the lower end of my, uh, really? Yeah. Okay. I think so. Of uh, the list. What do you, you think about it though? I could see you bopping to it. Um, I'm just not huge on the opening. It's probably like, wow, 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 wow. I said I like it, but it's not really my thing. Yeah, that's. I said solid, but not really my thing. Crazy bass work. But again, if you mention that, then you got to mention everything else going on. Okay, this is this is a groove, though. Robbery, assault, and battery. Uh, it, I was it, like, that's your thing. you like that. It, it, it's a, I'm not huge on the, on the vocal melody, not going to lie. I do like the um, what's happening with like the, uh, the kind of Hammond type of synth. Yeah, I don't think it's a it's a hammer. It could be, but like it it's reminiscent of it. And you got the bass. It's a very moderate drum groove, but the bass is really carrying it. Right to give you kind of that little extra punch, a little bit of you know swagger in your step. Mm-hmm. Just just a little bit of you know a little bit of pot, a little bit of sugar on it. You know. Yeah, I d- I can't <laughs> I can't say I remember much other than that chorus, but like that's saying something because. Even for the like my, my top two songs on here, I had to hear them again to be like, oh yeah, it's that one. Like it's an earworm. But I don't, I don't love it. I just think it's a solid piece of music for what it is. Something battery. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you. It's yeah. pretty solid. I dig it. It gives me a little bit of a little bit of pimp to my step. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Thanks. I don't I don't know what else there. I mean, yeah, you did point out the bass work, and that's like probably the highlight of the track. Yeah. That and, and the groove that's happening. And it's working in tandem with the drums and the everything else. So Um And then here's where I was talking about um uh the singing vocals kind of being like a bit off culture with its with its rhythm. Like you have the drums and the bass going like very straight. <laughs> and then and then you got you got Phil Collins just being like, Rumbery, like kind of like delaying like transitions into it. Yeah. You know? I really think it's awesome that he is also the drummer and singing. Yeah. Pretty dank. Just not like a lot Ringo. of those. Not a lot, <laughs> not a lot of those. Just like Ringo. Yeah. He, he's been inspired. Ripples. So I don't remember how it sounds, but I wrote Ripples. Notes. Never come back. That's the chorus. Oh yeah. Okay. So Never what I noted back. was its formula is kind of soft, loud, repeat. Um, not to say that's a bad thing. Like that's, uh, that's just music. <laughs> yeah. Um, very twinkly keys again. Big dramatic chorus. You got you got that uh that guitar coming back, but this time it comes right in with the uh with the vocals. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna play it for a second before. I- it- it's a it's a pretty singer songwriter type of open, type of opening. Yeah, I liked that. Well, this is an eight minute song. Jesus. Then you get get that little the uh, little diminished chord at the end. Mm-hmm. To give that uh suspense. There we release. are. Yeah, the guitar with the piano. The guitar always reminds me of like. <laughs> always reminds me. Yeah, there it is. The guitars always remind me of like a, like a kingdom and <laughs> just fluttery, fucking butterflies and dragons and blah blah blah. <laughs> reminds me of the certain level in Spyro Three. That's funny. Yeah, I don't know why. That's you, you, you describing shit that like reminds you of things is always like interesting. Yeah, it's, it's just funny. Yeah, is any instrumental thing that I write, you're just like. No, oh, it reminds me of castles and shit. <laughs> and dragons. But different. It's all castles different. and dragons. Different. Like, like the, when I was talking about yours, it reminded me of, like, the Shrek castle. <laughs> oh, I, oh I, you know what? I think that's a huge compliment. But when I'm talking about this, <laughs> I'm talking about, like, uh, 
You're talking about the spiral cartoon. Like a fantasy type of thing. Like, yeah, not like not like gritty. Not like gritty castles. Like fantastical. So more like, like, more, more like Victorian-ish. Like. Dragon Tales. <laughs> no, I don't know. Like Just the colorful. Day, the days of like medieval, I guess. Me- medieval, like. You I like know, the colorful. Midland. Your, yours is medieval. Yeah. My, mine's, mine's the grungy mi- medieval. Yeah. Yours uh, is like the, Game uh, of Thrones. Mine's the Game of Thrones Demon Souls, and this is the um, Spyro. And <laughs> Yeah, it's Spyro. That's the only thing that's coming to my mind. Um, it's not really my thing. I don't watch that stuff, so <laughs> so it's hard for me to think of examples. Maybe because like, a tower will remind you of like a loot or something. <laughs> yes. You're exactly right. I think that's why. Because you, you think of the boy. I mean, you also look at the art. And it's like, oh, yes. I mean, yep. yeah, it's like 1800s ish. Actually, mm-hmm. it's probably earlier. I don't fucking earlier. know. Um, yep, yeah, big dramatic chorus, interlude of piano and soaring but subtle guitar leads, which means I like it. <laughs> and then, he, and then they layered the other uh, like vocals again. Yep. But this time, Phil Collins right at the top. Mm-hmm. I don't know, dude. This song kicks me in the nuts so hard. This one, this one's tied for favorite. I think it's really hard. I go back and forth between this and Entangled. I could see that for you, yeah. Yeah, this part. Oh, yeah, then you have ah, oh, then you have the uh, the little echoey <laughs> guitar <laughs> that fades in. Yeah, th- that's I lo- what I, I fucking love that tone that they have. That shit is all over the land lines down. That's what I was describing. <laughs> that's what I was describing, like as the soaring kind of but subtle guitar leads that I like. Dude, I don't know how the uh, it's, it's like they loop it in on itself. I think it's like it's. Pro- I think it's some like on like some delay. I yeah, fucking know. I don't know. It, it, probably like it, it. just yeah. I don't know. It's it's, t- it's toes like this where you just have to fucking hear it. Yeah, it's which something is, which is why I recommend it to you. Yeah, that's more your uh, kind of. And then uh, you get the uh, specialty. You get the the drums just doing sixteenths on the hi hat. Yeah. It's opening every now and then to like it gives it like a very driving type of feel, and mm-hmm. so with pair with that with a guitar for me it gives some kind of like feeling of flying because mm-hmm. you're because the tempo is fast it's like building and then and then you get the low tones that build with the piano coming in doing the same yeah it's very much just like after after that rest of the chorus I'm just just listen this is what i mean listen to this this album and then just f- sit back and die just i don't know do it just think about you heard shit. it here just yeah sit back and die just sit back just die just fucking just what is everything at that point the shedheads podcast told me to kill myself <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean yeah it's no, the I type of just contem- it's just the type of music to contemplate shit and just like Fuck, what is everything, you know? Mm-hmm. To unalive myself, I'm sorry. Pretty much, yeah. Um, okay. Blah, blah, blah. That, 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 that's, uh, it's like the same experience of like playing Soma on your own. Mm-hmm. It's just, just play it, just think about it, and then just take the day to just be like, what is life at that point? And never watch us play it. <laughs> yeah, not never. Oh, fuck. I regret ever saying a bad thing about that game. Uh, a Trick of the Tale. The title song title song fucking be cool that they had the title song on uh in their album huh i said that the I guitar like sounds like a seabird so i'm glad i wrote that because now i remember do, 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 do. <laughs> we're actually in time oh really <laughs> yeah i think so uh and i like the transition into double time i remember that um let's see this is the uh this is the one that that's an earworm for me I had this in my head for a good solid week. You got no horns and you got no tail. It's it, it's gonna get the label. It, it always has to get the label whenever you got like chord notes and uh, and rhythm like bouncing up. Get that bouncy feeling. It's Beatlesy. Beatlesy as fuck. Yeah. Especially with the guitar being all twangy like a seabird, like you said. Yeah, I thought of the I'm Beatles not, too. It's an interesting comparison for Genesis, though. I'm not huge though, like on the on the guitar, like you said. No, yeah. Like with the sounds whip. like a seabird. It, it, it's kind of like uh, I don't know. It's just kind of poking my ear a bit. I'm just like, yo, can you tone that down just a bit? Like, I get what you're painting, but I get what you're going for and shit. But like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a sounds like an alarm clock or some shit. 
Yep. Which is what I wanted to do with a guitar like that. <laughs> so yeah, but completely funny. different context. Yeah, yeah. Um, no I guess that's all I wrote about it. It's, yeah, it's very bouncy. You got a lot of shit happening in the back, too. Like, the bass, the, oh God, just the bass in this album in general. A song like it, this it always really, just sounds friendly and like it would take your mother out to, your grandmother out to lunch. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. I, I don't know how friendly it sounds. Really? Um, I mean, give it, because like, it's not like, it's not all, you know, major chords in C, mm-hmm. you know? There's, there's got a little, because there's, there's got some, some um, you know, deeper, darker tones happening in there. Yeah. It sounds but, like it's about Satan or some shit. <laughs> I don't know. I could take it as like, it could just be about like... I, I I have no clue in terms of interpretation, but just given um given the Victoria art and the artwork, Victorian I mean um kind of stuff we already explained with the medieval shit I guess, um and the name of it I can I can just what I what goes to my mind is like um che- cheaters hustlers and swindlers of the time, hmm. which was you know like how a lot of the common people just made their money. Right. And what birthed a lot of shit here. I could see that too in that context. Like the little, but I little think shell game and three card Monty thing is what, you know, painted a lot of st- stuff that happens now. I think I'm more picturing like Beatles when, I, when I'm when i picturing. It's a little them, bit of both. It's a them, very whimsical song. Like, yeah. And I get that kind of tone from it, you know? Mm-hmm. Where like it kind of, it, it, it has this, um, it presents itself as like nice and innocent, but there's just some. There, there's some like uh, uncertainty about it, you know. Sure, it's just what I get from it, at least musically, you know, too. Mm-hmm. And uh, he also got a, um, a bit more distorted electric guitar happening in the middle there too. Mm-hmm. With some light group vocals also in the middle. Also, the song Duops. Yes, Doo-wop, doo-wop. I don't remember it. But it, if you said so, then it's. I think uh, it do ups. It easily could. There's fucking claps. <laughs> I stopped playing it. Maybe it doesn't. Oh, yeah, it does, right? That You, yeah, you it found does. it. You yeah. found the do up. I was like, oh, I wasn't sure. I don't know. I appreciate that. It, like, I think for this song, like, this one doesn't get too repetitive for me because they change up. A lot of things and um, like present more musical ideas, like the doo wop. Because mm-hmm. I feel like <laughs> I feel like on my first, li- it's h- hard to tell on my first few listens, but I feel like listening to this, I could be like, yeah, th- this is like a little doo wop kind of beat, and then it, it happens, you know? Yeah, it's one of those where like you you listen to something as a musician, and you're like, what you you, you it kind of passes through this filter of like. You know, what would I be doing? Where would I take the song? Where would I, do I expect this to go? It's kind of a cool... It happens, and, and it's like, whoa. Well, it's like a unique kind of new idea for this album also, this song, just as a whole, so that's cool. It, it, it's kind of a... I think it's just kind of like squonk, but better. <laughs> yeah. That's where I stand on it. So then we get to the end, Los Endos. Which all I wrote is it's a callback to the first track which i liked about that i think it's a callback to a few tracks probably but i probably didn't notice <laughs> i know it's a fucking <laughs> yeah you get the fucking wild uh drums happening yeah <laughs> sounds like a fucking powerpuff girls uh episode i kept thinking this is short but it's not it's on the bass. It's a regular length track for this album. Da, da, da. Going on six minutes. Um, so this this track, at least in the opening, you know, with what I was talking about, is a lot more what you'll find in the Lamb. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 I was, was trying like, to okay, I didn't out. fully register yet. I'll no, wait for it. I was it like too. trying to figure out what, exactly what you meant by that. Uh, just easier than saying the full album name. Yeah, the lamb lies down. So, um, <laughs> I was trying to comprehend if you meant like instrumental 
or just like some of the other ideas that it presents because they're i guess just I guess, kind of the track itself instrumental and the ideas it presents this just, isn't fully, it, how it transitions to something different too this isn't fully instrumental i guess no technically technically no you get vocals right at the very end yeah. and to be to be fair they're kind of lower in the mix too yeah yeah very much it's just there as like kind of an instrument yeah because he's not really saying anything either mm-hmm. um i don't think at least but this this track was took me a bit to like um fully like get used to i guess oh huh. i mean there's just a lot like, compared to the rest of the album there's like a lot of different transitions musical ideas it's presenting at you yeah you know just it's just spitting it out at you it's gotta do that without the vocals but man right after like um the the fucking crazy ass um you know drums that are happening when it slows down and then you get the bass just doing mm-hmm. some wild shit you remember that no it kind of has this breakdown you know it's like i just i guess i'll just play it yeah go to the middle here okay yeah kind of hard to hear on phone speakers but yeah yeah i got it well i mean that's why it's not a headphones you just the bass comes right through with headphones you can hear the music right in yeah exactly if you with headphones you can hear the music properly <laughs> fucking phone speakers god they're so terrible Phone speakers are in the same camp as TV speakers now for me. They're just awful and they're never going to get better. Mm hmm. Gotta have shit to. Uh, yeah. The song changes so much. Yeah. <laughs> and there. I guess it only does call back to the first song. I thought it did more. Well, I was proud I noticed that it called back to the first song. <laughs> you get a gold sticker for that. Yeah. Um. Let's see, I guess the part that I'm not huge on is uh when it kind of breaks and the choir comes in. Mm-hmm. The na 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 There's the choir that fades in and then back out. I can't recall. God damn it, I gotta take my headphone out, put it in the thing, so that way I can play it for you. God damn it, James. What, what don't you like? That okay. This part. Uh, there at the end. It's fucking, cool. it's fucking awesome it's, that, it, that it does the... Uh, bah, 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 duh, 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 just I guess slower. it's a little extra epicness for the finale. Yeah, but to me that just screams like they didn't really know how what to do here. Because the choir just comes out of nowhere and just back out. I don't know. I'm not huge on just the choir holding just, uh, just a minor chord fading out. Sure. It's a very simplified way of using it, I think. It's the same kind of... Um, it's, it strikes the same part of my brain like it did uh, in Gris when we talked about that last two weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, with uh, with that one choiry kind of uh, kind of part in the soundtrack. Right. You you don't remember? No, I can tell I by your face, but it's there. I, it's, I still it's, need to get to that. I talked about it in um in the in the podcast. It's there, so hopefully you all know what I'm talking about. It's a very minor thing, though. It's also like. It's completely just, it's just how I feel on it, for, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's also, I don't know, it just ends interesting. It's just, it, it's kind of a fitting ending. It's also kind of weird as fuck. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess it's fitting for Genesis, you know. I'm just rambling at this point. You seem like you're uh, you're finishing the we've, combo. We've got 23 minutes. <laughs> Are you fucking serious? Yeah, that that's why I was oh kind my. of uh, just letting you go. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Because we'll probably talk about mine for 15 of that. I am fucking sorry. Okay, oh, well, no, then, let's close it out. Let's close it out then. Let's close it out. Um, what would you think? How'd you feel? Conclusion. So... Show your work. Well, I, I kind of told you what I thought and felt in general. Um... A lot of it could have hit me more. Mostly, like, I didn't sit here and say, like, I didn't like this, I didn't like that. Um, But, like, I guess a lot of it just doesn't stick to my ear. And uh, so, I I don't know. I'm I'm going to... I'm going to... I'm going to have to give it a six just to to, uh, be consistent with my other ratings. He's giving it an eraser head six. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that that's what we're calling it now because like you're not super uh su- super strong on your uh, on your feelings of it or memory. Mm-hmm. 
And it's the like, probably could six. be higher, I guess. But like, yeah, it, it's that kind of thing. That's that's that. Um, yeah, I don't know how many times I would have to hear it because I already did more than I do any other album we talk about. You might just need some time to like digest it or then come back to it if you ever want to. But I mean, that's it. Yep. So I give it a six. Album super memorable for me. Fantastic uh, chorus and just shit happening. Good stuff from Genesis. I already like kind of explained how I felt about it in the uh, in the premise. Mm-hmm. Uh, nine out of ten. Oh, great. It's a high ranker for you. All right. Um, so we'll spend some some minutes. I, about... I need to pee like a motherfucker, but I will power through for you. I appreciate you. Oh my god, this is this is pain. Let's get through the crane wife. The crane wife from the Decemberists. The crane wife. Yeah, you remember? Remember? How I I would hope. <laughs> um, I just said one melody from it. Like, yeah, you remember? You remember the song? I, w- I would hope to. Yeah, on the album. So, um. I, I didn't really go into this thinking it would be your thing that much, but I thought there might be one or two tracks you'd date. <laughs> so, so maybe you'll surprise me also. I, you, I, I like it overall. That's cool. Um, They're a pretty interesting band. Um, I thought this would be the album to give you because of a certain song on here. <laughs> Obviously, you'll know which one I'm talking about. Um, I'm cur- I, I don't know what you're talking about, so oh, okay. I guess I'll find it. Maybe... Okay, maybe I think I know what it is. Yeah, you should. Um, um, so yeah, um, but I mean, you're 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 wreck. You premise it. Yeah, it's not my favorite of their albums that I've heard. I think I prefer uh, Picaresque a little bit, but I didn't think you would like that one as much. Um, and so I went with this. December is Crane Wife, two thousand six. Thirty years after, um, the uh, Trick of a Tale. Yeah. I mean, the song opens exactly. I I I don't know. You you give me stuff, and I'm just like, of course. Why? Uh, uh, just because it opens immediately with the uh, with chord. the guitar, and then just uh, acoustic guitar strumming, and then um same type of vocals. Uh, over it. And, uh, this one. <laughs> he's got the he's got a very similar vocal quality to uh Jeff Mangum to, to the guy in Neutral Milk Hotel. Yep. Okay, that's the guy's name. <laughs> cool. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So I I don't know. I heard that. I just thought, of course, a fucking course. They almost seem like the closest you get to modern neutral milk hotel, but not really. I figured you'd appreciate uh, this vocalist's voice more. I think I do. Yeah. Um. Mostly because it's vo- a lot more polished. For yeah, the vocal, vocals are pretty decent. Doesn't miss too many notes. Um, doesn't really do the the annoying vocalist, uh, you know, tismy things. Sure. Um, <laughs> I mean, okay, by that I mean like um, like breaking the the voice a bit to get that uh, sound. He does it once, but it but it actually works. In like this in this song end. or just on no, the, on in the, the, on the album near the end. Near okay, the end of the album. Um. Yeah, and I could de- you, you listed off a, a fuck ton of genres about this, which always makes me think like, okay, this is gonna be like involved for him, but it's not. <laughs> no, uh, well, not incredibly, at least. Again, I, I can I could see the the stuff that she listed off, which was like pop and metal and things. Well, no, not metal, like baroque pop. I said, um, I don't know. I just read what their genres are listed as on on their Wikipedia, right? Or maybe I read the the uh, genres of this album on Wikipedia. I don't remember which ones I read. But yeah, indie rock, baroque pop, indie pop, indie folk, alternative rock, folk rock, orchestral pop. <laughs> Those are how you describe the Decemberists, apparently. Yeah, and you know, if this podcast were longer, it could be it could lead to uh, maybe an interesting little tangent on genre. Progressive folk. <laughs> yeah. I, <if> pro- <laughs> It's listed as progressive it's folk. It's folky, but progressive folk. I don't. I don't know, man. The the only reason that I this because they they list it as progressive folk and progressive rock, and the only yeah, song not progressive rock. The only song that could pass as either of those, I think, is the second track. Yeah, I was about to say the island. Mm-hmm. Um, the island's about as progressive as it gets, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I mean, uh, that's again, that's the thing about it is that. I mean, if if people 
like we'll list all these millions of genres for you know one album or band and it's like how big is that list for ween then fuck yeah i want to see that but yeah anyway i, I would just call them experimental to give a uh yeah at that point i, I would just give a blanket genre and call it um alternative indie sure that's what this is to me there's poppy elements there's folky elements that doesn't i i i'm not going to categorize that into that genre sure you know just because there's some like little elements of it doesn't make it whole you know mm-hmm. you, you get what i mean it's kind of like um it's kind of like a, a composition type of thing sure but yeah that's just a that's just a little preface yeah um, I, I think um, I think in the aeroplane is much more progressive than this song of this, this album, album. This album, yeah. They're definitely uh, on, but I definitely like this album. On aeroplane, they were doing a lot of new things for the genre. On this one, I don't, I don't know, because I don't listen to a bunch of this type of. So I'm getting more into it, but um, at least I guess we should just. <laughs> go track by track while we have time. Yeah, very quickly. Um, I, Crane this, Wife Three is what opens track, I, us. I appreciate uh, the, the, how moderate the uh, the rhythm is and that it's building. You know, you, the bass is doing some 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 decent stuff. You got a little bit of piano there to hold out some chords, give it a little bit of you know widening out a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, it is very poppy though with what the drums are doing. Yeah, and just <laughs> kind of yeah, just kind of overall. It reminds me of like it, you got like the four on the floor type of beat. Reminds me of some like Mumford and Sons and stuff. Um, they did the thing you didn't like on a uh, Neutral Milk Hotel, also where they put the Crane Wife three. Yeah, I was about one. to ask why is it three, <laughs> and then one and two are way later in the album. God, it's so fucking, it's so fucking lazy when uh when bands put the the album title in the uh, in the al- in the album <laughs> stuff. <laughs> you put it like multiple times. <laughs> um, I guess what we what I should mention is that. A big characteristic of the Decemberists that we're just, I guess, probably going to completely ignore with like 10 minutes to talk about this is uh, that their albums and generally like all their songs are about different kind of myths and legends and they're just all story based. They're very much a lyrical type of band. I figured as much. <clears throat> you always give me the very lyrical things. Yeah. There there are a few uh, songs on this album that are very, very, very simple with uh, with its vocal melody. And that leads it to be a bit repetitive for my for my taste. Yeah, the train mm. wife itself is a story about like uh, the, a crane that came to a guy's door and he like patched its wing up and then the crane started making them money. Like it became his wife. It, w- it was some story and then he treated her badly and that's kind of what the story goes through. So it starts at the crane wife three after he's already fucked up and that's why the song's like i'll hang my head low and yeah so that's I'll kind of like hang, uh, na, na, this is a pretty decent melodies though i can it's it's okay it's all right yeah i think with this song it's all right it's one of their biggest songs apparently um um i, I do think it works best as an opener even though it is the end of the story yeah, I, I mean, I'm not sure. I don't know. Like, I don't think the opening or endings are incredibly strong. Sure, I I get where the opening can be. You know, it's just like you know, it's just starting with the acoustic guitar. It's just like a regular, it's just kind of, kind of basic build. You know. Yeah. But yeah, otherwise, like, it can easily be in the middle of here too. I don't fucking know. The island. Um, yeah. F- hearing the first song, I was just like, okay, this is this is James written all over it, and then it got poppy, and I was like, okay, maybe not so much. Then we got to the beginning of this song, and then I just went, oh, hell yeah, because we got this big old groove happening. I really don't like the beginning of this song. I knew you would love it. <laughs> <laughs> you got, you, it's a talk box. Talk boxes are fucking cool. Yeah. I, 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 oh, no, 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 no. I'm thinking of the wrong song. Yeah. I was actually thinking of a song that I like a lot, but... Um, yeah, this one is much more of like a uh, of like a prog rock type of a. Uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't like that sound. Tone. And then the comes in. Yeah, the talk box. Yeah, um, talk box guitar. I think it's a pretty it's it's a pretty decent groove. Very simple. Yeah, um, it's my least favorite part of the song, but I knew like it sounds very much like the stuff that you give me sometimes. So I thought you would like that. Um, and I kind of thought you'd just like the way the song builds because it 
has that uh, Hammond organ in it. There is there is a, a lot of Hammond organ feature on this album. Yeah, to varying degrees of success, I think. Sure. Um, it is very it is cool though to hear its inclusion because I don't not not a lot of people like use it anymore. Sadly, mm-hmm. um, and if they do, they're all of a sudden indie and experimental, and it's hipster music. That's kind of saddening because I think the <laughs> well, like I don't know. At least that's what I get from it. Well, yeah. I mean, you well, don't have to take a shit on indie music. But. Well, I'm not taking a shit on it. Yeah, I don't. I don't mean to. Like that's just because you said it's it's sad to you that well, they, no, no it's sad to me that it. more people aren't using it is what I mean because oh, okay. I think it's a very yeah. I didn't finish my fucking sentence. <laughs> it's a very versatile instrument, despite like it's you. It's very unique sound. It's kind of like piano, you mm-hmm. know. But like with organ, you could change the um, you could change the drawbridge so you get like a varying different effects of how wavy that shit is and how fast it the um the Leslie speaker can rotate too. Mm-hmm. It can fit a lot of different songs that are a lot of different tempos if you know how to use it. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to. And here, I think it's used off fairly well. It's a uh, in this song. It's, I think so. Yeah, it's kind of used for like some solos in here. I like. I love that part. Yeah. Yeah, I really thought you'd uh, dig this song. Probably your, probably your favorite easily, huh? <laughs> probably. I honestly, I, I think I need more time with it because um, yeah. I, um, not gonna lie to you, I listened to this part, this song a little bit passively, um, just because I was like, okay, let me take this in, and then like this, this is just one of the ones where because it is a twelve minute song, you know, yeah. um. And somewhere down the middle, it does sound like it changed. It's a different song entirely. Or maybe near the end. At some point, I definitely was like, okay, here's a new track. Oh, no, it's the same one. Shit. I think in the end when it's like, uh, you'll not feel the drowning. Yeah. Yeah, I think when it's just him and the acoustic guitar. I really love that. Going up and down. It's pretty nice. the ending. I think this album has a good balance of uh, kind of soft, loud, and groovy, and then more um, kind of withheld. I think this one's going to be my third favorite just for now. Wow. Okay. Um, I, I I have no idea what you're going to like from this album, so I'm excited. Well, I, I just because like I I'm not familiar enough with it because that that second half did throw me a bit. Like, oh, this does sound like a different track, but I don't know. Okay. Uh, I, I do like the the rhythms that, ha- that are happening. I think I don't know if it's this song, but it's another one where like you do get like a real big, um, you know, Dark Side of the Moon s chorus hmm. uh, with the with the Hammond organ. Well, we've got minutes, so let's. We keep have going. minutes. Uh, Yankee bayonet. Very melodic this album. A lot of good melodies here. Oh, and then you find out a girl's in the band because she starts singing. Behind. Um, second favorite song. Second favorite song. There you go. Cool, cool. Um, I, I, the one thing I don't love about this is the uh, kind of. Not scatting, but you know, like the bop, 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 ba, da, 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 Oh, I love ba, that part. Da, 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 da. Really? Okay. Ba, 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 yeah. That's like, I like the melody. I like when they have the lyrics for it. See, this is where like the pop elements come in because there's very yeah. like, very um, um, accentuated um, in your face melodies. I like that. That yeah. are very easy to remember. But like these ones... Or, or like fit into the song so well. Their pop sensibilities it, it are there. It just it, it fuck it, it works very well. Um, I love the guitar tones that are happening on the acoustic stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I just like that kind of strumming where um, I hit the chords and then you you have some like passing notes mm-hmm. where you kind of get like a both in one guitar strumming and uh and some bass. Yeah, it gives the guitar a little bit more foundation. The that's the type of acoustic guitar that I dig. But there's even more th- with that than that shit happening. The chorus kind of changes it up a bit, and I do like um, I do like his vocal melody happening. Um, it's also very clean vocal vocals, vocals. Mm-hmm. Um, and also the uh, the other singer, the the girl, um, not the, the not very uh, it doesn't really like 
take away from the tone at all either. No. Which is a lot of like duets with uh, with the male voice and a female voice. That's where I feel like the struggle is. They work together because it nice. can because it can very like change like the tone of the music given their vocal quality. You know, mm-hmm. it's a it's a very like it's a very risky thing to do. Right. Um. But yeah. I think I think it pulls off very well, and th- that part, that little uh, the little poppy like you know whatever you, you whatever you called it, the bop, bop, bop. yeah, the bop, bop, bop part. Um, that makes it even more uniform, you know, mm-hmm. because that that just blends them perfectly. They build off of each other's quality, giving a new type of one, you know, mm-hmm. That's what doubling notes on is gonna do. Mm-hmm. Um, so that just kind of makes it even more seamless. Good song, I dig it. Cool, I like it too. Very oh nice. Valencia! All um, I can remember is the chorus. Doo, 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 oh doo. Valencia! Oh, this one's got such a poppy kind of disco pop, vibe. It's very, <laughs> very four, four on the floor. I'm not as wild on it, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, it's okay. It, it can be like decent driving music. It's like summertime music, you know. Yeah, I like the chorus a bit more i think it just doesn't do a whole lot for me you know it's hard for me to get invested to a to a beat where it's just that or it's just right you know, no, i'm on the same page with the, with the four on the floor so i guess we have to move on quickly we do very quick uh perfect crime this is like a disco song Fuck. funky i, I, I dig know, it i didn't know how the funky disco kind of thing would hit you i i actually dig it at first, was I was like, perfect, what the fuck the is perfect, this? The perfect, the perfect, the perfect, the perfect That's like the whole crime. song. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's a bit repetitive, a little poppy, but I can I can get behind it, you mm-hmm. know, just from just from the bass and the kind of rev. Right. right. It's kind of it's kind of a simple lick, you know? A bit dancey. Like, yeah. it, it's kind of, it's basic, you know, for the type of genre. So, this for, is... It's kind of, I mean, the bass is kind of rudimentary, but, like, the tone works out um the rhythm the the vocal melody the per- i don't know like what we just said it kind of reminds me of some smiths interesting i, oh, I like. could i could see that oh you know what the lead singer loves morrissey apparently and has like a morrissey covers album i'm but glad he doesn't he, sing like him he's though. a bit cl- closeted morrissey fan because morrissey's an asshole but yeah <laughs> um cool Th- is this your favorite no no Okay. No, but I dig the song. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll like it, but it's not my favorite. Well, when the war came, Darn it. this is like a weird kind of like heavier sound sound for them. Yeah, it's heavier. I don't know how much it I, fits them. I'm not. I'm not as big on it. It's I, very repetitive. Um, when the war came, yeah. I don't find the it. lyrics to be interesting either. From what I can pick up, it's just kind of droning. Um, and coming from and from the perfect crime, I don't know. It's not as big. Not a hit for me. I'm pretty much with you. Four. Okay. Shankill Butchers. I really like this one. I know it's very minimal. Not as much your thing, but I really like it. I knew this was probably going to be your favorite. It's not my favorite. Everybody knows. If you don't mind your butt. Yeah, I really like the chorus. Mm-hmm. I actually don't know. I, I do like his. I do like uh, the melody and the way he sings on here. I think that's the big appeal for it. Sure. Um, the acoustic guitar, I think, is fine. Um, it's very light, you know. It's mm-hmm. just kind of bouncing forth, very ballady. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's okay. I think it's I, I, again. That's the kind of what some of these songs will fit into. Like it's just squarely like it's, it's all right. right. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, summer song. My favorite. Probably my favorite. Yeah. Do, 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 this is the one do, I started do, 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 humming do, do, earlier. I was like, no, wait, I like that. Very catchy. Very catchy melody. Um, <laughs> swinging a lot. <laughs> yeah. That that's that that's the little falsetto. It's the falsetto thing. Um, yeah. that was in um Yankee Bayonet. Yeah. Or, or the fuck we talk- yeah. Yeah. Um, again, uniform of the album. Um, makes the makes the melody even like stronger. Earworm got in my head. I was listening to it when I was walking over here. Fantastic song. I really think it's the best one on here too. Um, you also got some um some harmonica tisms. Yep. Very cool stuff. Um, and it very it works very well off of the acoustic guitar. So they got some they got some sounds coming here that work well with each other. I don't know, like just sounds and tones that work well with each other. You get get points for me. Cool. What was that? Yeah. I like it a lot. The Crane Wife 1 and 2. This one's do, hard do, for me do, to keep do, track do, do, of. 
this song this one's a very story okay weirdly enough i have more of an opinion on this song than uh the island and it's about the same length okay the, do it quick this song is squarely okay it fits squarely into b into, it gets a b for me okay b -tier. like b tier yeah um there's enough to like, like, the the, first like half it's a groove it's cool there's and it's progressing enough but it's repetitive enough for me to be like you could be doing a lot more you know yeah i like the first half better um, brain wife one and and it's the the hammond organ pretty nice but it's not doing a whole lot either yeah it's nice to paint the uh paint the atmosphere but yeah the second half doesn't do enough new i don't think um well i, I, the, I when you get sort of the transition part i'm just like oh cool something different but like neither of them go it's a very like, blunt transition far. it's like huh no not them go very far so i think this is where i think the island like inches out in terms of you know being a better song i definitely track. prefer the island but yeah um, but yeah so it's squarely okay sons and daughters i don't really like this one do, 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 do. straight I hear up a familiar voice in here really yeah What's that? Uh, isn't Phil Collins on this song? Is he in it? Yeah. He's doing the uh, the backup vocals along with the girl. Did you look that up? No, I just heard him. I was like, is that Phil Collins? It sounds... Okay, let me check. It very much sounds like him. In our mouths, for cinnamon. I don't think so. That would be pretty amazing if they got him to... In our hearts, smell I don't see that. Hearts. He's not all... It sounds like him. Hmm. I don't know. That'd be pretty neat if they got fucking Phil Collins, but... Uh, it really, really sounds like him. Um, I think the song's strong part is the diff... Definitely, like, what it fe what it features is the uh, the different um, voices. Right. Um, th You had a word for it. I forgot. But it's, like, it's very syncopated with each other. Three different voices doing Layer pretty cake. much the same melody, but sometimes harmonizing off rhythm. Mm -hmm. it gives a very unique type of um type of sound to it I, very unique song. yeah all i have to say is uh, th this is not my favorite song i don't know it's it's very it's kind of this it introduces one thing and it's kind of strophic through the whole song yeah uh it is kind of the same thing it's very the very much like the kind of folk that doesn't really do it for me um even though it's one of their most popular songs uh, and we're not talking about the last song because it was a Spotify extra. Oh, really? You, you might have forgot. Why? I really like the song. I like it too, honestly. Uh, it, I was going to say, like, it's very strange that this the is the last song. The calling of the fold. Yeah. It's a, it's a, I, I, I it's don't know the fucking term for it, but it's like, it's in the minor key. You know, it's kind of like, it's swaggy. It's big bandy. Yeah. It's like, um, it's like that one song in The Queen is Dead that we talked about. It's got the, uh, Mr. The, fucking, the washboard. <laughs> right. Yeah, which is pretty fitting. I, if anything, I wanted the the spinner thing. The right. that would have been cooler too. But yeah, Sorry, I appreciate. We gotta go. Um, I really fucking have to pee. This is like th ugh. throw me a number three. Th really? What <laughs> for the for the album? Oh, oh, okay. I, you just said throw you a number, so I gave you a number. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to rank it, you mean? Yeah. Um, I was like, that doesn't sound like what you would give. It. Strong seven. I'm giving it a seven. Also, strong seven. Maybe what a light you, eight. What are you giving me? What am I giving you? You feel like playing a game this week, James? I have to play a game. You wait, what? Yes. Cool. Wait, wait, wait. I'm giving you first. Give me, give me what you got. What's it called? Fuck! It's a movie. Requiem for a Dream. Watch it. Rec oh, that sounds familiar. What is it? It's uh, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't seen it, but I want to watch it. Cool. It sounds very familiar. Uh, we'll have fun talking about that. You're getting a game. We're gonna talk about games more, like we said, like we promised. It's a hat in time. Yes, I don't know anything about. It. It's kind of platformery. That's what I know about. It's it. an Thank indie you. game, completely indie. What um, an ending! It's a it's a, the community made it and shit. It's very awesome. Cool music. Uh, it's on the Switch, PlayStation, any PS, uh, Steam. Buy it. Let's do whatever. blow out the scandal. Let's play it. It's only about eight hours. Yeah. All right. See you next week. We Yay. don't know what we're doing yet.